Hello everyone. So in this tutorial and in the next few tutorials, I will walk you through a systematic approach to reporting an abnormal EEG. And without further ado, let's get started with this patient. So this is, the story is, this is a 25-year-old man with a history of medically refractory epilepsy. I am told that he has multiple seizure types. He has atonic seizures, he has tonic seizures, he has tonic-clonic seizures and also episodes of spacing out. So let's start with this very first page and you have to ask the question, what do you see here? So first question is, is this patient awake or asleep? If you look carefully, you can see these eye blink artifacts. So these are eye blink artifacts. And when you see eye blink artifacts, along with some muscle artifact, this person is awake. The second question is, what is the background rhythm? Just a reminder for those who are new to the channel, channels that end with an odd number are recording from the left side of the brain, channels ending with an even number are recording from the right side of the brain, and channels that end with the letter Z are recording from the midline and you can see the EKG at the bottom of this recording which is shown in the red color. So in this slide right here, you do not see a posterior dominant alpha rhythm. Let me show you what a normal posterior dominant alpha rhythm looks like. So this is from another patient. This is a normal alpha rhythm. So if you look at P301 or P402, you see alpha rhythm, alpha frequency that is here, that is not seen anteriorly. So anteriorly, meaning in the frontal head region, you see a muscle artifact and you see some beta activity and more posteriorly, you see an alpha rhythm. So in this case, this is a posterior dominant alpha rhythm. But coming back to our patient, we do not see a posterior dominant alpha rhythm. We see eye blink artifacts and we see a slow background. Now, what are the different frequencies that you see here? So just looking at this page, you can appreciate delta frequencies and theta frequencies. You can also appreciate some faster frequencies. So let me draw it over here. Let's pick up a pen here. Okay. So what you see here, this is a delta frequency. This is a delta frequency. On top of the delta frequency, you also see theta frequencies and alpha frequencies that are on top of it. You, If you look carefully here, these are beta frequency that is riding on top of the delta frequency. So on this page, on this particular page, you see a mixture of delta and theta frequencies and that makes, and this is in the awake state, this is an abnormal EEG at this point here. So this was comparing it with the normal EG where you can see the nice alpha rhythm that is shown up here. You can see this alpha rhythm in the posterior head region. I say posterior because it is best seen at P301 and P402. Going back to our patient, you can see more of that delta frequency. What you see here, this is muscle artifact. What you see here, this is a sharp wave right here. And the sharp wave is in the right frontal head region in this case. You can see ongoing delta frequency here. Some theta activity and delta frequency that is there. And you can appreciate that throughout this recording. Okay, moving on. Now we start seeing some generalized sharp waves. So if you look over here, you can appreciate the generalized sharp waves and you see it in multiple locations. The patient is still awake. You can see the eye blink artifacts here. You can see the eye blink artifact and you can see the muscle artifact. So the patient is awake and during wakefulness, you are, you've are you seen lateralized sharp wave in the left temporal head region. You also see lateralized sharp wave in the right temporal head region right here and then you see generalized sharp waves. So please make a note of that. 
while looking at the EEG, it is also extremely important to keep an eye on the heart rate. It's better instead of describing the heart rate as a single entity, describe it as a range. So the lowest heart rate that you see, the highest heart rate you see, and whether this is regular or irregular. I just could not resist putting this picture on. This is Medicine Lake. Last month we were in Jasper National Park in Alberta, and this is a very beautiful lake. If you ever happen to travel to Alberta, make sure go and visit Medicine Lake. Okay, coming back to our EG. What do you see here? So here, what we are seeing here is we are looking at a lot of generalized spikes and spike in wave discharges. You can also appreciate some poly spikes here. So if you look carefully here, this is a poly spike because it's more than one spike in the complex there. So you're seeing generalized spikes, you're seeing generalized poly spikes, and previously we saw independent sharp waves in bitemporal head region. This is more of the same stuff. The patient is asleep at this time. You do not see the eye blink artifacts. You do not see the same amount of muscle. So in sleep, in this particular patient, the generalized spikes are way more frequent. What do you think about this, this page here? Is the patient awake or asleep? <clears throat> Well, if you said the patient is awake, you're right. You again see the eye blink artifacts. So eye blink artifacts are seen here and on this very second. And you see muscle artifact and you see a lot of muscle artifact at other times as well. So here you're seeing eye blink artifact and you're seeing muscle artifact. Patient is awake at this time. We do not see the muscle here we do not see the eye blink artifact patient is asleep and we are noticing in fact sharp waves that are seen independently so here this is the right temporal head region you're seeing sharp waves in the right temporal head region you're seeing sharp waves in the left frontal central head region and sharp waves are seen independently on both hemispheres as well as in generalized distribution and here you have generalized poly spikes. Poly spikes are visible here. Independent sharp wave is visible in the left temporal head region. This is again a generalized burst of sharp waves. And more of the same stuff. You're seeing independent sharp waves and you're seeing generalized sharp waves and the background is slow. There is no eye blink artifact. There is no muscle artifact. So these are more abundant sharp waves seen in both hemispheres as well as in generalized distribution during sleep. And more of the same stuff here. I'm sure now your eyes are tuned to identifying these sharp waves here, the generalized sharp waves here, and some fast activity. And we'll talk more about the fast activity just in a little while. So as you see here, Apart from the focal sharp waves, you also see this burst of generalized sharp waves with some fast activity, which is also called paroxysmal fast activity. It is more obvious here. So generalized spikes, <clears throat> generalized spike and wave, and this fast activity beta discharges that are seen, and this is called paroxysmal fast activity that is intermixed with the generalized spikes and generalized polyspike and wave discharges. On this particular page, there is this run of slowing that is more prominent in the left hemisphere. You see it here, compare it with the right hemisphere. So asymmetric slowing more prominent on the left side. And then you see this burst of sharps that are more prominent in the right hemisphere. I hope you're able to identify the asymmetric slowing and sharp waves in the left hemisphere on this page. And some, the same stuff is seen over here again. This is just some artifact here. This is not activity coming from the brain, but this activity is coming from the brain. 
So how do you report this EEG? So if you look at the EEG carefully, you need to start with the clinical history. So I already provided you with the clinical history that you can add on to your EEG report. You need to have a description. And in this case, as we saw throughout the slides, the EEG background did not demonstrate a posterior dominant algorithm. A mixture of delta and theta frequencies ranging from two to seven hertz was seen throughout the recording. Generalized spikes, spike and wave, and polyspikes were noted intermittently throughout the recording, but were more abundant during sleep. Sharp waves were seen independently in both hemispheres with shifting laterality. Paroxysmal fast activity was also seen during sleep. Photic stimulation did not provoke an abnormal response. I did not show the photic stimulation artifact on this EEG, but looking at the rest of the EEG on this patient, photic stimulation did not provoke an abnormal response. Hyperventilation was not done due to the COVID-19 pandemic. The EKG demonstrated a regular heart rate ranging from 64 to 66 beats per minute. So that is the description. That's the body of the EEG. That's the description. The EEG interpretation can be broken down into impression and clinical correlation. So our impression for this EEG is this is an abnormal EEG, secondary to slow background, bihemispheric independent sharp waves, generalized spikes and polyspikes, as well as paroxysmal fast activity. And the clinical correlation is that these findings are suggestive of a diffuse disturbance of cerebral function with a high risk of seizures independently from both hemispheres as well as with generalized onset. These findings in the context of the clinical history provided can be in keeping with the diagnosis of lennox gastaut syndrome. I hope you are familiar with the lennox gastaut syndrome. If not, you can read up about lennox gastaut syndrome and I do have a separate tutorial that I made a few years ago on lennox gastaut syndrome. I would like to hear from you how do you report an abnormal EG? How do your neurologist, if you are a neurologist, how do you report? How do you format your EG report? Is Does it go the same way with description, impression, and clinical correlation? Or you have a better way of describing the EG findings? I would love to hear, hear from you. Thank you for your attention. And I hope to see you in one of the future tutorials. Thank you so much.